because the courts have ruled that as these men get older, the, these prisoners, men and women both, the government has got to provide them with health care. And that is expensive. So men like O.J. Simpson and uh, Lynette Fromm, who pointed a gun at Gerald Ford, after 30 years she got released, and Grimmer and some others, they get released after a while. Uh, oh yeah, the man who shot Reagan, uh, he was released even. Uh, what? Hinkle, Hinkle, yeah, he was released. Again, so that the government won't have to pay the medical bills of these people as they get older, because medical costs can be really, really expensive. Late in his life, they took Manson to a hospital for some undisposed ailment. Um, again, it's all federal law. Now, um, Is that a Brady bill for that guy he pulled and shot and killed one of the agents? What's that? He made a bill behind that. Yeah, they made a bill, the Hinckley Brady bill or something. Brady, Brady, because yeah, he, he wounded yeah. Brady permanently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reagan recovered. Brady was hit in the brain. Yeah, yeah they wounded Brady permanently. Yeah, uh, but in other words, uh, all this. But anyway, um, Johnson's popularity fell down, and this led the way for Richard Milhouse Nixon to become president. After he had failed to become president in 1960, Nixon ran for governor in 1962. Was that, who did he run against? Was it a female here? No, no, in 1960 he ran against Kennedy. Well, who did he run for? Like Nixon, he, 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 and governor? Oh, he ran against a couple of women. Yeah, yeah. Your book mentions one of them for Congress. Yeah, yeah. And he, he won both times. Voorhees was won, and this other one I can't think. It's in your notes, so it should be. He ran again, and he, he won by calling them communists. But after a while, that came went out of style. And he had to win by another means. But he won in 1968 owing not to his own popularity, but to Johnson's unpopularity. So uh, Johnson became highly unpopular. Nixon uh, won on a promise to bring us together again promote more law and order. That's the ironic in view of what happened. Anyway, Nixon was elected in 1968. Eisenhower lived long enough to see Nixon in the White House where he wanted to see him anyway. I could say I wish I had worked harder for Nixon. Um, but anyway, Ike lived long enough and Nixon spoke the eulogy for Ike when Ike died and about, let's see, within two months after Nixon was inaugurated, I could have been, you might say, living at uh, Walter Reed Hospital with heart problems. Uh, Ike died. Nixon regulated the economy. Now, one thing I want you to notice about Nixon, for many, many, many years, the country was on a gold stand. The stand was $32 an ounce. In my days, I'd have gold sales at $32 an ounce. Nixon took us off the gold standard. At one point, gold went up to $800 an ounce. I don't know what it's trading at now, probably five or $600 an ounce. But when Nixon took us off the gold standard, the minimum wage was a dollar a quarter an hour. Prices took off like crazy. Inflation. Now, eventually, Presidents Reagan and um, some of the others, and Clinton, I have to say, Clinton got the inflation somewhat under control. But, uh, but anyway, he took us off the gold Inflation took off. And uh, it was really bad under Jimmy Carter, and it wasn't altogether Carter's fault. Time will tell whether Nixon did the right thing or not. Personally, I think we'd have been better off left on the gold standard. Yeah. They said, uh, to, I mean, Carter, when they, they used to always say when I was a kid, I was always here about that. They said, well, Carter listens too much. To, he, he, was, he was listening too much to his advisors and people who didn't have his best interest at hand amongst his advisors. You know, who a president picks for advisors can make or break him. And one thing that hurt Carter right again, his most closest trusted buddy, his friend, uh, Lance, Bert Lance, was forced out of his camp. And uh, they, they bought a whole bunch of charges against Lance that probably were true, but Lance used some slick attorneys to get him off the hook. But all that took millions of dollars and a whole lot of time. And um, the result was Carter lost his buddy and in turn could not win another election. But um, by the way, Carter has set the record for the longest living president. He's alive. Yeah, and the longest living after he got out of office, too. Yeah, he's still alive. Yes. Anyway, now, in regulating the economy, Nixon, at one point, called for a 90-day wage and price freeze. 90 days would be no wage, free, no, no wage increases and no price increases. This was strictly enforced. In spite of that, inflation continued anyway. 
Um, don't ask me exactly how that worked, but um, there was a wage price freeze. And we also learned that wages and prices are often one and the same. Prices are wages, wages are prices. You know, my dad used to say that what the government should do is freeze pr prices but increase wages. They're the same thing, folk. You can't do it. You're paid based on the, whatever your company you're with, can, whatever price they sell their product for. That's how you determine your pay. But oftentimes uh. companies, they raise the prices. And What's that? Oftentimes companies, they raise the prices and just keep the wages like. Yeah, but in the long run, it'll tell on them. I mean, okay, yeah, in the short run. Oh, yes, yeah, so they do. But sooner or later, they'll have to raise price, raise wages also. Initially, yes. But in the long run, it catches up. They think, stay together. I think Ford, Ford was on to something. You know? said he paid his, his workers. The highest, the he did. He was yeah. But so did Lockheed. They they were the highest paying. Paper. That way he could pick his workers, pick his workers and close. guarantee that they wouldn't quit. And then, like you said, the, you know they're going to buy the product, so he's going to reserve the money right back. He get the he'll get their money right back. Yes, he was wise, but also he was a slave driver. And he refused to allow unions, and finally his wife was like, "You've got every other automobile company is allowing unions. You've got to allow the union and negotiate through a union." Um, you can uh, you can badmouth unions all you want to. Go ahead if you don't like them. Um, but they kept the regulated the uh, they kept re regulation of uh, like you said that gap that we have now as far as the have and have not. Yeah. The unions kept that. Gap they did. Closed, not, you know, and also the unions did a lot to help a lot of workers who were fired unfairly. Oh yeah, NOW was formed. National Association for Women. Rush Limbaugh calls it the National Association for Some Women. <laughs> Folk, what you may not know is there's another group, Christian group, Concerned Women for America, or CWA. Concerned Women for America has three times the membership that NOW does, three to one. But they don't get the press. Um, now, I told some students in other class that they want to take their makeup. So if you see anybody looking in the door, let me know. I told them they could go ahead and interrupt my class if they wanted to. I mean, it's getting late in the semester, folks. And so, uh, by the way, now, well, never mind. Now, all right. Um, Nixon expanded on Social Security. He expanded on government housing. He expanded on food stamps. Now, you might think, doesn't this sound very much like a Democrat? Yes, it was. And my dad got to where he liked Nixon less and less because Nixon opened up doors to China. Nixon secretly negotiated with the Chinese to where he made a personal trip to China. And uh, this was a real surprise to everybody, but uh, he, he made a trip to China. He sent Henry Kissinger, and supposedly Henry Kissinger got to Afghanistan, and Henry Kissinger supposedly took sick, but actually Henry Kissinger was on his way to China for pretending to be sick in Afghanistan. And, uh, but Nixon justified the lie, saying, well, uh, I just could not tell the country at the time that, uh, until it was actually finalized that I was going to China myself. But anyway, Henry Kissinger, pretending to be sick in Afghanistan in hospital, and went on to China and negotiated with the Chinese. Then Henry Kissinger was a really, really good diplomat who could make short-term peace agreements that had no lasting value whatever. Right. Henry Kissinger is still alive, by the way, but he was put on the shelf. Uh, yeah, he became a college teacher. Um, all right. Inflation soared. Unemployment crept back up. A lot of the reason why inflation soared was in 1973, right after Nixon was elected, oh, by the biggest margin ever, and he was elected in 72, but in 1973, the Arabs attacked in Israel, called the Yom Kippur War. They attacked when Israel was celebrating a holiday. And unlike the other wars that were over with in a matter of days, this one actually lasted three weeks. And the Egyptians made a lot of advances. They went to the other side of the Suez Canal, and uh, they moved on to, into Israel. So did Jordan make temporary advances. But Israel retaliated. The United States gave a lot of military aid to Israel. C-5, so Lockheed built C-5s, big, big airplanes, carried tons and tons of military equipment, T-34 
to help the Israelis fight. And after three weeks, the Arabs, rather than lose real badly, they went to the negotiating table and negotiated a peace. I will say this, the Arabs have not fought Israel from that day till this. Everybody knows that Israel has nuclear weapons, even though Israel will tell you they don't. If you think otherwise, you're welcome to say so. But we're, I mean, we're certain of it. I mean, but, but again, yes, okay. Who is providing or helping them? With What's that? It's Israel, Israel is such a small country. Who is helping them? America. The United States. Okay. The United States <laughs> is helping them. I, mean, I just had to answer that. Uh, the United States is doing a lot to help Israel. Um, without the United States, Israel might not exist. Again, you all, I've told you my take on that. Uh, the United States benefited greatly because it proved that American equipment was better than Soviet-made equipment. Uh, so, uh, anyway. Anyway. Um, now, as a result, the Arabs decided they were going to get back at the United States, and they began to... Um, they began to to pose an embargo, a fuel embargo. They would not sell oil to the United States. So to conserve oil, Nixon urged all of us to turn our thermostats down from, in the winter time from 72 to 68, and medical doctors will tell you, we used to believe that 72 was the ideal temperature today, they will tell you, 68 is a better temperature for the human body than 72 was. And also in the summertime, set our air conditioners to 78, and folks, this will save a ton of money. Was this like a 70 or 72? At one time, when I was a kid, 1970, what year was that? in the 1960s, 50s, they said the ideal temperature was 72. This was done for many, many years. I'm talking about when Nixon... Nixon said that his doctor told him that 68 was a better temperature in the okay. wintertime. And in the summertime, set your thermostats to 78 because uh, too much air conditioning used a whole lot. And I'll tell you that for personal experience, setting your thermostat at 78 in the summertime will really save a whole lot on air conditioning bills. Uh, too cold of weather when you go from 100 degrees outside to 72 inside, it's not really good for you. 78 is a better temperature. I mean, you know, again, if you don't think so, you're welcome to take it up with your doctor or take it up with somebody else. But now it's 50, he said a 55 mile an hour speed limit. Now, folk, I can remember, you might have heard something about gas lines. There was a time when to buy gasoline, you had to wait in a line that was about an hour long, and you'd learn how to. Maybe read a book or write a letter or something, anything you do, and everyone's going to move your car up one length. Remember they had odd and even days? Too. They had odd even days, yeah. If you had a home address or maybe your birthday. Your license plate. Your license plate. If your license plate ended in an odd number, yeah. or if your license plate had an even number, you'd go gas on odd even days, yes. Uh, now, also, I remember reading this magazine. It was printed in 1972. It said, the world will run out of fuel in 50 years. All right, folk, of those 50 years, now let me see, from 1972 to 2019, 47 years have gone by. We are not running out of fuel. Instead, we have found out that the earth beneath our feet is producing more oil than we're burning, and we're not going to run out any time within our lifetime. But that was, we believe that with the American love affair with the automobile is going to have to end. We're going to have to find some alternate means of getting around. And well, it did not happen. My dad used to laugh at the supposed fuel shortage. His conclusion was right. The method he arrived at, the conclusion was wrong. How did he arrive at intuition? That's all. How do you know that intuition? But intuitively, he seemed to know. I mean, the method was wrong, but his conclusion was right. He called it the supposed fuel shortage. Now, today, I'm going to jump to 2019. We now have enough gasoline and oil in this country to what we could tell the Arabs, we're not going to buy any more of your oil. Due to environmental concerns, we're not about to get it, but our last previous president would not allow us to get that oil. Our present president says he's going to, but they've taken it to court and they're going to determine to stop it in court because it's going to hurt the American Indians and hurt the environment and also hurt the Arabs, but that's another matter. 
Many of you know what I'm talking about, the North Dakota oil fields, the South Dakota oil fields, the shale oil, the, um, anyway. All right. Nixon began to clean up the nation's lakes, rivers, and air, and folk, I'll tell you something. We have 10 times more cars on the road today than we had in the 1970s. Back in the 1970s, you go to the city of Atlanta and you couldn't breathe the air for the fumes. I've been to Atlanta a few times recently and the air is fairly clean. Today's cars produce such clean exhaust that, but in those days, cars put out a whole lot of smelly, fumy exhaust and I visited Jamaica in 1973, and Jamaica with only 10% of the cars the Americans had, Jamaica would, it was a really foul place to breathe. Mexico was just as bad. They did not have our pollution control standards. You go to China where they don't have near the, and then most people in China get around on bicycles. And the people in China, some are wearing gas masks. I don't see any gas masks here. If any of you, I mean, oh yeah, when I was in the army, we trained with them, yeah, but I don't see them. If any of you know anybody wearing gas masks because they were so polluted, our air and our water is much cleaner than it was in the 1950s and 60s, much cleaner. And there's a town in Tennessee called Ducktown. Any of you familiar with it? Oh yeah, well, it became a desert because of the copper mines. Today they restored Ducktown. Ducktown is green again, but I went to Ducktown once, and oh my, it was a desert. Looked like you were on the moon. Today it's green. Um, Nixon did a lot to improve the Indian. All right, takes us up to the next chapter, chapter 29.